Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In a previous video, we looked at the Mule Cart in the new Mountain Royals DLC, and in this video, we're going to do a similar quick introduction to the Fortified Church to hopefully address some of the common questions that may come to mind for this pretty unique building. To start off, this is of course a regional replacement for the monastery. Like a monastery, it can hold relics and is the source to train monks as well as get your monk techs like usual. One major advantage it has over the regular monastery though is it can garrison units. This is somewhat restricted in that you can only garrison villagers, monks, warrior priests, and strangely mule carts, which is odd considering those are technically buildings, whereas regular military units cannot use it. Altogether, I think this makes the town center the most comparable building, as side by side their attack and range are identical, with the same base HP as well. They also fire at the same rate, and when garrisoned by villagers, have the same arrow firing mechanic. Just like town centers, they also don't fire when ungarrisoned, but are limited to 5 arrows as their maximum, whereas town centers can fire up to 10. So while it looks like a town center with low garrison numbers, its maximum firepower is only half as much, and it also only holds 10 instead of 15 villagers. As a general rule, every one or two villagers you add contribute one more arrow, mimicking how it works with the town center, with monks and warrior monks contributing nothing, besides getting a place to hide. I don't want to undersell that benefit though, as for a forward siege workshop and monastery, being able to pop your monks into a fortified church to protect them could definitely come in handy. Now, one strange exception to the arrow mechanic is when it comes to relics. A relic always contributes one arrow, assuming you haven't reached your cap of five. As for upgrades, basically the building upgrades you'd expect work on them, as well as arrow attack upgrades, including a Georgian unique tech for even more attack. That said, keep in mind, just like a town center, you can increase its attack, but you can't increase its range, which can become a bit of a problem in the late game, as even a mangonel can outrange them, for example. That's one case where a defensive tower has a very significant advantage. A couple of other points is that the fortified church is much cheaper than a town center at just 200 wood versus 275 wood and 100 stone, while it's also a 3x3 building instead of 4x4 tile building, which makes it much easier to place on rugged terrain. In places, it would be hard to fit a town center for terrain reasons, but you want a bit of defense, having a fortified church for similar protection seems like a good idea. They also have the same build time as a monastery at just 40 seconds, compared to the town center's 100. The creation time and lack of stone cost I think are giving some people pause that these might be too strong when used aggressively, but we'll talk about their drawbacks in a minute. Another interesting quality you may not have thought about is they're very good for healing. It turns out for units garrisoned inside, they heal twice as fast as castles, and in fact four times as fast as town centers or towers. That's enhanced by herbal medicine by a factor of six, meaning damaged monks and villagers are fully healed in well under a minute. Even more strange though is what it does to the mule cart. Here I have a mule cart with 38 HP, put it into a fortified church for 30 seconds, and when I kick it out it's at 182 HP, meaning it's healed by 300 HP every minute, 12 times faster than a villager. This is even enhanced more by herbal medicine, giving you about a full heal in 10 seconds. Countries around the world should apparently be taking notes from Georgia and Armenia on healthcare. Now, this might all sound great, except for the lack of increased range with fletching, etc., but there's a couple of key drawbacks to point out. First, unlike the town center, the fortified church has a minimum range. You, in fact, need murder holes to attack units directly beside it, or at least a large degree of overlap. Considering murder holes also requires a university first, that's quite an investment in early castle age. Another hidden weakness is they take damage from both anti-building and from units that specialize against towers and stone walls. That's bonus damage that town centers don't take, and villagers are among the units that benefit from that extra bonus. Together, I think both of those disadvantages make them feel like something you could probably rush down with villagers if someone tried to fast castle and drop them in your town. Likewise, players without a university can have these focused down with knights, or anything else melee, who won't take return fire from isolated churches. So that's a general look at the building and a few quirks that I found. But of course, it comes in two very different flavors depending on the civilization you pick. So we'll look at that now. Starting with Armenians, one of their bonuses is that the first fortified church they build gives a free relic. Not only does that mean a passive arrow that will fire, but also 30 gold per minute. I can also confirm it starts a relic countdown to victory if there are no relics on the map and you're on standard victory setting. As far as the game is concerned, there's now suddenly one relic on the map and you own it. So the countdown begins. 
Likewise, if your opponent has all relics on the map and has already started the countdown, building your first fortified church as Armenians will cancel it, as there's now a new relic on the map and the game is aware your opponent doesn't have it. This obviously doesn't have any importance in ranked, but might come up at some point if you're playing unranked, a scenario, or quick play. Armenians also have a unique warrior priest available at the building, which I don't want to get sidetracked looking at too much here, but it's a mix of an infantry and monk, performing a bit of healing and relic collecting backed up by some decent stats, though it takes anti-monk bonus damage from the light cavalry line, so I think it's going to be a little easier to counter than some players are expecting. Now on the other side, Georgians I think have a little more going on at their fortified church, thanks to it granting a plus 10% collection rate bonus to villagers within a 10 tile square, which to be clear does not stack multiple times on the same villager. Note the eco boost reaches the outer square shown here, as the inner circle shows the building's firing range when garrisoned. Now plus 10% is a very good boost to your economy, and with mule carts you'll tend to have very good efficiency on your wood, gold, and stone to capture most of that 10%. Doing a quick check even reveals that farmers in the very late game benefit from this. Of course, you do have to pay 200 wood for it and recoup that cost before you're really off to the races, and that got me wondering how useful they are on wood lines. To get a sense of whether they're worth it, here we have a group of 10 Georgian lumberjacks. One option is to build a fortified church for 200 wood and then a mule cart, getting the 10% boost. Or we could just skip the church and save 200 wood. How does that decision play out in the long run? Well, trying it out both ways and tracking how much wood was collected each minute, it seems for 10 villagers there's about an 8 minute payback before the fortified church starts to pull ahead. That's good, but not amazing, and there are definitely ecotechs that pay off faster. I'm starting to see the church more as offering protection for units and paying for itself back in 8 minutes rather than supercharging a small group of villagers. Now, of course, a group of 20 cuts that time in half to closer to a 4 minute payback, which is pretty good, but then only half the villagers can garrison inside of it, so you're also taking on more risk. Of course, this isn't really a factor if it's inside your town, where you'll also have at least one town center to pick up any extra villagers. In that case, you probably are getting something closer to that very nice 4 minute payback. In addition to this bonus, Georgians also have a unique tech, giving defensive buildings plus two attack, which of course works on fortified churches, though funny enough, it makes it hard to actually get all the available arrows. The way the mechanic works, you max out at four arrows with 10 villagers inside, so you actually need the guaranteed arrows of relics to reach your full defensive potential after that tech. Also, as a quick side note, yes, they do benefit from the Georgian's team bonus as well, taking just 50 wood to fully repair, as opposed to the 100 repair cost for Armenians. This is one factor that makes me a little nervous about battles with town centers or enemy towers, and remember you have a very nice hill bonus that can come into play here as well. Personally though, I find Georgians have a really interesting economic trade-off with their churches. Hitting Castle Age, it's hard to get town centers and churches out at the same time, unless you advanced much later than you had to. Considering churches, at least at the moment, cost about half the resources and no stone, it's tempting to stay on one town center for a while. I could definitely see a 40 stone cost or something like that added to the building down the road, as that way you'd have to pick between 5 churches at the start of Castle Age, 2 town centers, or a combination of the two. As for concerns, these will become wooden towers for offense, the fact they have to be garrisoned at all times, have a minimum range until you build a university and get murder holes, and take a lot of bonus damage from villagers, I think is what the devs are counting on preventing that. Either way, it's a very creative building, and aura effects are really showing up a lot in the more recent civilizations. That's all for this one though, and hopefully that covers the main questions that came to mind. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.